it's a good thing for stackers when the price of gold and silver go up in dollars but the other way we need to look at it in the long term is that the dollar is going down versus a gold and silver in the long term here at liberty and finance we're licensed brokers with miles franklin we are standing by the inventory ready to make sure you get what you need even into the wee hours of night and on weekends because preparedness doesn't stop call us 1-888-81-LIBERTY that's 1-888-815-4237 Welcome back to Liberty and Finance. This is Elijah K. Johnson, and with us today is our good friend Mario Ineco from the Maneco 64 YouTube channel. Mario, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome, Elijah. How are you? Doing well. It's exciting times in the markets as we saw a new intraday high for gold above 2100 about $2,150 or so there. I woke up today and saw that. I didn't even <laughs> pay attention. I was, you know, enjoying my Sunday and all, you know, the gold market is going crazy. Your reaction to this breakout we saw? Yeah, I did my live stream uh, as I usually do on Sunday night, uh, London time, finished just after 10. And the uh, futures market opens at 11 london time and i went upstairs i brushed my teeth and then i looked at my phone and there's a a message from clive who was on my live stream and this was uh after 11 and he said oh uh, gold's flying and uh, i had looked at gold uh on the open a few minutes after the open it wasn't really doing much it was up two bucks then i i turned it on my uh, account and looked uh 2130 and i thought wow <laughs> and uh and then another friend called me and i told him don't get too excited you know try to stay level-headed and then this morning i wasn't surprised that it was back down to around 2070 which was the uh all-time high from 2020 and also uh we closed last week at 2072 and uh, yeah, now I think uh, the last I, I looked, it's uh, around 2020, just above 2020, the spot price. And uh, I, I spoke in my video this uh, morning, uh, London time, that yes, it's a, it, it's a good thing for stackers when the price of gold and silver go up in dollars. But the other way we need to look at it in the long term is that the dollar is going down versus a gold and silver in the long term and that uh, you need to stay like balanced uh, not get too excited not too despondent and that it's not speculation you know if you were trading gold in venezuela about 10 years ago <laughs> and uh, at one point you know the bolivar did, did quite well and you got out uh, and, and you know because you're tired of uh, trading you, you know you didn't think gold would go up again uh, you got left uh, holding a bag of bolivars that is worthless now and i think the same thing is going to happen to the dollar and all the other fiat currencies vis-a-vis -vis gold and silver it is interesting. A lot of people look at the gold price and see, you know, it rising. But at the end of the day, over the long haul, it just means that currencies are falling. Can you expand a bit more on that? Yeah, it's really simple because, uh, you know, uh, if you look at uh, the price of gold, you know, how many barrels of oil we can get with an ounce of gold, it's been it fluctuates. But over the last 50 years is about 15 to 20 yeah, so it's a real uh, measure of value and, and also i've got here a, a sovereign which is just a quarter of an ounce that hasn't changed today <laughs> you know it, it's the fiat currency that that changes because they issue too much of it uh and um yeah and if you go back uh, even further to uh, 1971 when nixon closed the gold window uh, the dollar has lost 98% of its value versus versus gold. So that that's the way to look at it. Uh, of course, there are people out there who will trade gold for fiat dollar profits. And that's completely different. Um, if you want to do that, uh, that's a different game. 
It is a different game. And I think it's important when we're seeing this volatility in gold. I know a lot of people might uh, be a bit concerned because, I mean, it has been a quite a crazy 24 hours. If you look at that chart uh, swing of $100, at least it seems like, as you mentioned, you hold up that quarter ounce of gold that hasn't changed at all. But people who are invested in physical gold right now, what should they be thinking? Because obviously we can see quite a bit of a volatility uh, as as we're seeing in the gold market right now. Yeah, I think the reason why we're seeing the volatility is that we've broken, you know, uh, very key technical levels from the last uh, almost four years, you know, that 2050, 2070. And then last night, uh, my time or afternoon, your time, uh, someone came in and covered probably a lot of paper shorts. And that took the market way up to just below 2150 yeah and it's a really it's like a a line line in the sand you know usually that kind of volatility happens uh when you break such key levels you know we had like a triple top there and we broke through there a lot of energy and that and that's why um, that happened. Uh, but in terms of the volatility in the last 24 hours, um, yes, it has been volatile. But I looked at uh, someone uh, put out a report. It's based on the last five years, and they've got something called the Sharp Ratio, which measures uh, volatility and return uh, of an investment. And gold is uh, like third on the list it's been the least volatile and the best returns in terms of the sharp ratio so it's actually a, a very uh, very uh, stable um if you want to call it investment i think the other top two were like a long and short hedge fund uh, uh portfolios or you know s stuff that was really hedged and Bitcoin, for example, the sharp ratio on the ranking, they they were way down uh, where, you know, compared to gold, even though they they had have done well. Uh, yeah. So that's what I would say. Um, and uh, the other thing that I always think, because I've been <laughs> looking at, at the gold market since O2 when I started uh, buying gold and I could tell right away that there's something fishy, you know, <laughs> in the paper market. And uh, but what I tell people is, what's the other option? Do you want to get rid of your gold and put it with with the banks as a uh, fiat currency? It's not even legally yours. It's an unsecured loan. And the other thing is, well, do you really want to have a, a lot of uh, money in the bank uh, right now? I don't think so after what happened in March. And we know uh, the latest FDIC uh, numbers weren't very good. The un unrealized losses on securities, it's approaching 700 billion. That's that's how, you know, whenever I get a little bit uh annoyed about these moves i always think what's the alternative and to me that there, there isn't and the other one is um do you want to finance um the current uh, administration in the u.s or the current ad administration here in the uk where they let in 745,000 net uh you know, uh, illegal immigrants or migrants in one year, which is over, you know, 1% of the population. So th that's the other way to look at it. By keeping uh, fiat currency in the bank, you're financing all these things. Uh, again, you might be okay with the uh, Biden administration or the Sunak administration. That's up to you uh, to decide. Now, as we look at the markets, obviously, Bitcoin is making quite a run today. It seems like a lot of markets are moving right now. Are there any drivers or would you say more, most fundamentally it's the falling of currencies? Yeah, falling of currency. And I think people are realizing that, um, you know, the central banks are going to have to come back in and uh, uh, stimulate again. You know, the treasuries are stimulating you know we're still running deficits but about bitcoin the uh, ft website they've got bitcoin on the top of the page uh and gold at the bottom <laughs> and uh bitcoin is 38 percent uh, below its all-time high and gold just re reached an all-time high it just goes to show that uh, the uh mainstream financial press 
they don't like gold, um, you know, and I think they, they want to push people into Bitcoin uh, because it's digital. And if you uh, if a lot of people wake up to gold and see how nice gold is, how you can hold value and how private it is. Uh, or silver for that matter, they they won't go into a d digital. And, and with uh, this idea of bringing in CBDCs, you can't have <laughs> the, the public going physical, can you? So I, I think that's the other reason why the uh, Bloomberg's and uh, FT's of the world kind of uh, keep Keep gold, uh, you know, on page 17 of the news. Uh, I noticed on Friday as well, gold closed at an all time high. And on the weekend, there's very, very little coverage of it. Which is interesting. I know I, I recently interviewed Tony Greer from uh, TJ Macro, the Morning Navigator um, newsletter. And he was talking about how quiet, you know, the gold market is right now. We're making these, you know, we're, we were testing at the time I interviewed him. We were testing all time highs. We just made a new all time high um, above 2100. But, you know, there's not a lot of talk about it. And it, as you mentioned, it really hasn't gone mainstream yet, which really, I guess, proves the point that it's very likely we could see much higher prices from here, um, given that the public really hasn't noticed a lot. Yeah, and it's ironic because today, you know, uh, we reached an all-time intraday high, and now it's come off massively. Uh, I bet, you know, sentiment <laughs> even within stackers is really low. So, yeah, like you said, yeah, there's uh, very little public interest. Uh, it seems like uh, in the last month or two, people have gone back into looking at Bitcoin uh, because there's a lot of sound money people that, you know, have gone into Bitcoin. Uh, I mean, I used to cover Bitcoin about six years ago. And I I mean, it's better than fiat, but I still uh, think uh, gold is the way forward. It's like, uh, you know, I'm a golfer. Uh, and someone said, you have a choice of playing uh, the old course at San Andrews, going there and playing, or you have a choice of playing uh, San Andrews on a simulator. <laughs> you know, I, I take the uh, the bad weather in Scotland uh, and playing on the real course, then uh, going to a indoor place where it's nice and warm, and, but playing it on a simulator. That's how I see, you know, Bitcoin, um, you know, gold is real money and Bitcoin doesn't have the thousand, thousands of years track record, really. Now, when it comes to central bank digital currency, it seems like this is something governments are continuing uh, to develop and push onto the public. What is the response that people should have? It seems like it's uh, it's new and exciting, right? So some people are looking at cryptocurrencies that way. But I would say central bank digital currency is exactly the opposite of everything that cryptocurrencies you know, promise is it's going to be decentralized. It's going to be private. It's going to um, be limited in supply. And a central bank digital currency is are, is none of that. Um, so what should be people's response uh, when that is finally pushed on the public, for example, here in the U.S. Uh, or in uh, the U.K. where you are? Yeah, you're right. You know, the central bank digital currency, the, the name itself says central. <laughs> it's not decentralized on the, you know, they might say, oh, it's on a blockchain, but I think they, that, that wouldn't be uh, true. Um, I, I think, you know, they're very, uh, very determined to get a CBDC through, mainly because the current system is dying, in my opinion, and they have to have a replacement. And I, I don't think it will work. Um, but uh, how people should react, uh, it, it's difficult um, may, because so many people are, you know, they think it's convenient. But if you're not of that, uh, you know, opinion, then the only way to try to uh, stay outside of it. And unfortunately, I think we, if they bring it on and they force it onto the public who will have to use it. But having, you know, physical gold and silver outside the system, you know, that, that that's a good thing because they can't control that. Um, and the other thing is, um, 
yeah, having a lot of uh, fiat dollars or fiat pounds right now in the bank, that could be under threat if they bring in a CBDC because that they could say you can't use that anymore. We're going to give you CBDCs, uh, but we're going to give you only a tenth of what you had. So that's that's how I would uh, look at uh, CBDCs. And uh, it, it, I was uh, reading again um, fiat money inflation in France the other day one of the chapters and and they said that uh, after the assignats uh, which was their experiment in money printing after the rev during the revolution uh, they they tried to bring in something new called the mandats and that was supposed to be gold backed but that didn't even work so i, I think that's how the cbdc is going to be they'll try to bring it in it, it might work for a while but eventually it, it will uh, yeah, it, it won't be uh, any good, I don't think. And it seems like going into the end of the year here, if we get back to the gold market, it seems like um, next year, a lot of people are talking about the Fed pivoting. So fundamentals right now seem to be you know better than ever for the gold market. Your perspective on what we could see uh, next year for gold, if we do you know continue to break out of these uh, levels as we, as we have last night. Yeah, I mean, the the higher the nominal price goes, you know, uh, the moves are going to get bigger. You know, when gold was at six hundred dollars, ten percent was sixty dollars. Now, ten percent is two hundred dollars, and that's why it feels so volatile. But yeah, we'll have to see what happens in the next week or two if they're able to push it back below two thousand. They might, but it, it all looks pretty good, uh, unless, of course. Uh, the Fed uh, and the other central banks uh, don't pivot and they, they stay hawkish and they even tighten. But I, I don't think that's the plan. I, I mean, I'm seeing like publications like the FT, you know, saying, oh, they need, need to pivot central banks. You know, they're saying inflation is under control. So, yeah, um, it looks like the market is expecting some kind of cut uh, in late spring. So, and I think gold, and, gold is already kind of forecast, forecasting that. And that's one of the other reasons why, you know, it's been so strong of late. Before I let you go, Mario, did you want to share with the viewers where they can find you online and any last thoughts you had uh, for our viewers who are definitely looking real close at the markets right now? Yeah, you can find me on YouTube uh, at Moneco64. I uh, publish a video there every day. And uh, also on, on Twitter, I'm quite um, active. It's at Maneco1964. And last words, yeah, just um, always think, you know, uh, if you're, <laughs> you get discouraged by the moves like we saw today, uh, what's the alternative? Do I really want to jump back into the uh, boiling part of water, you know, that's, which is fiat currency? Mario, thank you so much for your time and God bless. You're welcome. Miles Franklin Precious Metals is one of America's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers. Miles Franklin is a rated and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, licensed and bonded, and has zero complaints ever registered. Here at Liberty and Finance, we are licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. To order, simply call us, discuss your needs, and we can let you know our live inventory, prices, and availability, and lock in your order over the phone. Once your order is locked, the price is held for you regardless of market fluctuations, and the metals are reserved for you awaiting your settled payment. Within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email invoice detailing the order and payment instructions. Miles Franklin accepts payments by bank wire, ACH or electronic check, money order, check mailed priority mail, and cryptocurrency. The fastest forms of payment are bank wire and cryptocurrency. Upon settled payment, Metals will ship out within three to five business days. You will receive tracking information via email. Domestic shipping charges are $15 for any order under 500 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. For orders larger than that, domestic shipping is free. The package will be boxed, fully insured, and labeled discreetly, with no indication of the contents inside. For your privacy, the name Miles Franklin will not even be on the package. To talk to myself, Kaiser, my brother Elijah, or my father Dunnigan, call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237.